Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insight through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I'd like to welcome Regina Luis. Her history is such that she started her journey by living in over 30 foster homes, group homes, and psychiatric facilities before the age of 18. Regina went on to put herself through college on scholarships, wrote two best-selling memoirs, and began touring the nation, telling her story and inspiring others. Regina's life story was made into a lifetime movie called I Am Somebody's Child, The Regina Louise Story which was nominated for a 2020 NAACP award for best director. Regina was also the recipient of a 2019 Jordan award for service and 2021 Christopher award, which was given to producers for stories that affirm the human spirit. Regina has recently released her book permission granted where she offers a powerful permission manifesto and proven techniques to support readers to connect with their deepest desires to follow their dreams and live life on their terms. We have a great deal to talk about, Regina. Let's get right into this and welcome. Oh, Summer, thank you so <laughs> much. And I love your effervescent spirit. And I'm excited to begin my day, Women Crushing Wednesday, with Ooh. you. And we're going to have a good time at it. So thank you, dearest. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Regina, for being here. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. So let's get right into this. And can you give a glimpse of where you grew up, how you bounced from foster care group homes and psychiatric facilities and kind of a sound bite? Mm, I grew up in the same foster home, unlicensed that my biological mother did. My sweet, innocent mother had her first child at 13 by a relative, and then me, five years later. She was in no way prepared for the level of spiritual, physical, emotional engagement that it takes to, to raise children, young girls in her own infancy, if you will. The result of that is I was unwittingly cast into a world that already had an opinion of who I was, what would become of me. And I learned very early that I was a nobody's child, that I was taking up the air for someone more worthy. And as a result of that, I should really off myself so that someone more deserving could benefit from the space I was taking up. And the people I lived with, my caretakers, they too, were hurting people who hurt people. And I was smart enough, intuitive enough, connected to my spirit enough to make a pact with God and to say, hey, if these people beat me, hurt me, shame me one more time, I mean, I was that girl one more time. I will know it's a sign from you that I need to get out of here. And you know what? That day of reckoning came and I kept my word. That was the first time at 11 years old that I understood the value of integrity, being integrous. I kept my word. My mother, again, bless her heart. She had no idea of how to keep her word, how to be her word, how to, to be steadfast, mm. heartfully so, to the promises she made. And so... There were a lot of promises made, none of which 
ever manifested. So I became the rebel. I became, and I'm grateful to the, to the nature of the rebel because that empowered me, permissioned me to prove my parents wrong and all the adults who, in my opinion, made excuses for their behavior. So I was beaten that one last time. And as a result, I took myself away as I said I would and thus began my journey of finding my way back home to myself, which would be a five decade journey. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Right. How beautiful that you found your way and that rebel spirit, that Mm. intuition, all of that, you were able to bring all those parts and pieces of yourself together and boy, make it into an incredible journey where exactly here you are today. You are Mm -hmm. here today. And you saw beyond the walls of challenge. Oh, summer. (laughs) Summer. What I did is a very tight thumbnail sketch. At the end of the day, my journey, and I I invite listeners to hop over to Amazon Prime and watch I Am Somebody's Child, the Regina Louise story, the lifetime version of that thumbnail sketch. Because ultimately... I was separated from my family, never to go back again, never to hear from them pretty much again. I entered into foster care, 30 different foster homes, solitary confinement, okay? No doors, no windows. The only sense of belonging I have was to the light that wafted over the threshold of the bottom of the door on the floor. And you know, misprescribed the psychotropic drugs. I was labeled as everything, every, pretty much every pathology that is held within the DSM two, three, four, I was all of them. If I were to let my caretakers tell it and you having worked in the very systems I came from, you have a sense of what I'm saying. But all along when people told me these things, these these doomed prognosis, my insights never felt like what was coming from the outside. So you said earlier about authentic and gut. That's what it was. I believe authenticity is the art. Authenticity is the art form of listening to oneself from within and to stay true to the individuality of that, to the sovereign of that. And that's what I always did. I believe that was my saving grace to keep an ear, to keep an ear open to that place where spirit meets bone, that place where authenticity, the intuitive innate whisperings of the soul, where that comes forth. I've always had that ability and desire. And I celebrate that to be able to go to that place where spirit meets bone, ear to that place and always open and willing to capture the echo, capture the essence and then to move from the inside out. That is what saved my life because if I let the scores of people tell it to me the way it was told to me, there is no word in the American lexicon that could describe what the multitude of people sold to me or tried to sell to me as a bill of rights as to who I wasn't. Yeah, wow. Not only are you incredibly resilient and have this innate ability something within you, not something that's coming from the outside, obviously, but something that was built in you to overcome and work through such, I mean, challenges, trauma, the messages that were being fed to you, so to speak, 
So my question is, Regina, during all of this, was there any source of support or mentorship for you? Any? Well, what's fascinating is I'm going to dovetail off of what you just said, something in you, something. And I'm going to say that something wasn't a thing that was unspecified or unknown. That something, I'm pretty certain, is, was, and will always be my connection to spirit, to the universe that billions of dollars each year are built upon because of this thing called divinity, divine energy, divine self, divine truth, whatever you want to call it, right? you know, goddess, God, pure consciousness. I think, I know that that, that, that I was too young summer to, to know what my soul knew. Right. I I was too young to have accumulated experiences that would help me understand. I didn't have the intellectual tutelage to break things down right so it was always an intuition an inner knowing an inner grace you know it was grace let's make no mistake so let's call that thing grace in action right spirit in action right the divine purpose in action but I just wanted to say that now can you ask that question (laughs) that's okay that's okay yeah I want to kind of piggyback on what you just said here and you said the divine the spirit and I believe there's something built in each of us and it's always a question to me this innate and learned resiliency whether it's the spirit the energy just the ability, mm. your ability that you grab onto and hold onto and say, I can do this. I can do something different. I can change my journey. I can change my way, even though regardless of what is happening around you and all that you're being impacted by, there's something within you, mm-hmm. regardless if you've been shown, taught, right, right. you have that energy. Right. So thank you. So I believe when it comes to resilience, the ability to to be stretched, to be punched, torn, to be eviscerated, and then come back to the original way of being seemingly unscathed and unharmed by the experiences. So that's my right now working working definition of resilience. So if as someone who was brought up on Christian indoctrination, so if I were to look at my Christian influenced upbringing, and if I say to you, which I will, that I I went to Sunday school every Sunday from probably six to the day I left my home. One day in church, the Reverend recites one of the most beautiful, what I will consider recitations in the Bible. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever shall believe it and, and have everlasting life. Now, the day that that reverend recited that, I, I will never forget it. Everything about my internal world came online. So if we look at resilience and we mash it up with John three sixteen, and then we go to the story of Easter, right? The fact that Christ rose after enduring the 12 stations of the cross, 
So if I were to take all of that, I would say that to be resilient is to be Christ-like. It's Christianity put on its legs. It's Christianity in action. Mm -hmm. So that day that I decided to wed my entire being to John 3, 16, and the power, I will never forget it. Because I, I feel it in this moment because it was that day I can remember sitting on the pew, my dirty little socks, right, that I tried to wash the night before on a washboard because we, I grew up with people who were sharecroppers. So their mannerisms, their ways of being were influenced by profound poverty. Living off the land, making a way. So I'll never forget. I live with people where we took all the slivers of the ivory soap, boiled them on a Saturday to get the gelatin, mm -hmm. dump that out, and then cut it to create more soap. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'd take those little slivers of, of glycerin, rather, and then I'd wash my socks on a washboard summer. Could never get the dirt out. So anyway, I'm sitting in that church and that man says what he says. My erect peline muscles, baby, they were standing like a, like a high and tight military haircut, squeaky tight. And for me, in my world, what that, what that says, now that I understand, that place where spirit meets bone was activated. Right. And spirit recognized itself. And when spirit recognized itself, it recognized me and I it. And then we became running buddies. And where I was, spirit was. Where I am, spirit is. Who I am, spirit is. Who spirit is, I am. So there are three tenets, I believe, that are associated with resilience. And you just said it. You said you had a, an, an attitude of, I can do this. I, you're right. Because the three tenets for me that resonate with the truth of resilience is I can, I have, I am. I am is one of the most powerful declarations in the universe. So how different is that from the Christ consciousness of Christ saying, I can be crucified. I have what it takes to endure this, I am the one to even transcend this thing called earth, this thing called man. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. I can, I have, I am. For me, that's the gospel. In any situation, I can imagine a way out of this. I have within me the capacity to trust myself. I am trustworthy. I am enough. I am by my birthright lovable. Period. And to put that into action, Summer Watson. <laughs> girl Woo! you took us somewhere that was amazing wow girl. oh my goodness okay so i gotta bring this back down to go ahead girl bring it back down where it's you've given so much here already you've i can i have i am and you are hmm. and you've shown it and you've hmm. done it and you've overcome and you have this innate ability and resiliency. So you did. And what you did was you worked through this. You saw beyond the walls. You put yourself through college. You've written books. You've, there's a movie about you. Now you're coming out with this book, Permission Granted. It's out. Kick ass strategies to bootstrap your way to unconditional self love. I'd like to ask you, can you tell the listeners a bit about this book and how they can dream the impossible dream and hold on to hope 
in such extreme and daunting circumstances? Mm. First of all, it's to not identify with the extreme circumstances because usually circumstances that we, that, let me, let me back this up and I'm going to say this really quickly. When I was on the set of I Am Somebody's Child, the Regina Louise story, I'll never forget the day. There's like 168 talented people coming together to make this movie. And there was a moment where um, the, I overheard the, the director speaking, you know, it, it with a loud voice and saying to people, this is a dark story. This is a hard story. This is, and, and she went on and on and on and it crushed me. Here I was 50 something years old and I was crushed and I was crushed because I never, she said, this is a dark story. So we must, blah, 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 blah. Mm. I never, I never saw my story as dark. Mm -hmm. I never saw my story as difficult and hard because mm. I only knew what I knew. And it's as though I was Dorothy on the Wizard of Oz and all of a sudden the curtain was ripped from behind what I thought was, wasn't what it was. And then what it was, was revealed to me. Mm -hmm. And so I say that to say, be careful of the stories you listen to. Because see, as a child, I never listened to what people said about me. Therefore, when I arrived at the mo moment of being on that movie set and they said what they said, it didn't add up to who and what I believed about myself. I believe that I was the light. I believe that when I was in solitary confinement and the light washed over the threshold at the bottom of the floor, I wedded myself to that. So all the darkness that they spoke about, I did not see that. That, that was not my experience. Right. In the light, there was nothing, in the darkness, there was nothing but light. And I associated myself with that. I am this light, right? So I say, in permission granted, my intention is not to give anybody permission, but to be the permission, to embody permission. And from that representation of embodiment, it's an invitation to anyone who reads the story to engage with it, to go into praxis with it, to have experiential experiences so that he or she too can embody what I posit in this personal growth manifesto as a possibility. So this book, this experience is really a personal growth manifesto, an invitation to engage with, I can, I have, I am on your own terms. That's fantastic. And I appreciate what you said in total, because I think when I said extreme circumstances, many times, as you had fantastically expressed, <laughs> when we say certain things, and I remember this even growing up, having somewhat of a tumultuous childhood myself, it was interesting. People would always say, I'm really sorry. I'm mm -hmm. really sorry. It wasn't until college I said to myself, stop, and to the people, stop saying you're sorry. Mm -hmm. Stop saying you're sorry, because my journey, what I see about myself is so different, and you don't have to impose how you feel about the situation onto me, because I don't have ownership. I don't claim ownership over their choices. What I do claim ownership is over my choices and the way I want my journey to look. And mm. this is what I love about this book and the title permission granted kick ass strategies to bootstrap your way to unconditional self-love. And I think that how you expressed, how you've expressed through this interview that you have a self-love for yourself, that there is an energy that is within you, a light. You saw that light and you were part of that light underneath that door that you're also giving hope. And you're saying, see the light in your life, see the light within you. And Summer, I'm going to 
take it up to the highest possibility. Yes, see, absolutely. The invitation is to be, is to become, is to embody, to become the change you want to see in the world. And what does that really mean? So when people have said to me, have hope, in my mind, I would think if I have hope, if I hope, all I'm really doing is sitting and waiting for someone mm-hmm. to be the change. Mm. However, if I be, become a hope, if I am a hope, then there is my permission to step into my I am. Step into the truth of the eternal truth of all of nature. I am invites me into the truth of what is constant and alive and awake and aware in this very moment. So when I am in, I am consciousness, when I am embodying the qualities of hope, I become a way. Right. I become a way. Right. And I, and I get what you're saying. And it's interesting because we can go down this, this very interesting road of hope. Does there have to be hope prior to becoming hope? So it's, it's interesting because you don't want to sit and wait. And that's why when you're talking, I, I agree with you. I agree with B becoming but is there something that you have to see or hold on to first before you become well that's that's an interesting let's split some hairs you know like in 50,000 <laughs> and and 50,000 different directions and sure <laughs> so so if, if we look at if we look at hope as a desire so let's just say, to keep it easy, hope is, is this feeling, this sensation of desire. And rooted in that is an expectation. So why not become the expression of the expectation? Why not become the expression of that desire? So I say that I want to write a book. I know not how I'm untutored in that arena. Where do I begin to understand what comes next? So I have the idea. So the idea in and of itself, the idea springing forth, everything springs forth from ideas. The world and the material reality in which we all exist in this telephone, that microphone, those glasses, they all began in divine inspiration, a.k.a. idea. And then we trust those ideas. We trust. That's where we go back to authenticity, right? Every single developer, every single inventor puts skin in the game to take an idea and to play it forward to its highest possibility. And here we are. So I did that with my life. If I came into the world to a society that said black, check for unworthy, female, check for unworthy, poor, check for unworthy, a bastard, check for unworthy. I could go on and on and on and on and on. Their ideas of me, permission not granted. My idea of myself, (laughs) my idea of myself, unlike the ideas that came to Einstein, the ideas that came to Thomas Edison, to Tesla, to Elon Musk. My idea was a lot simpler than that, perhaps. The idea that I'm none of, I'm limited by any of those classifications. Check, right? So I believe that 
given that hope is is similar to an ambition, an aim, a, a wish, I believe in embodying those ideas, those they're all constructed, right? We, we've constructed this thing called life. So I'm a high proponent for constructivism, right? I think there's something interested about it. So if I pay attention to how I feel inside when an idea presents itself and become curious and go, what does that look like? So the day that I left my people, we're talking leaving my people, yeah. my people, Summer. Right. So when that idea of freedom, and I received the freedom in the books I read, when the idea of, oh, all of these characters are not being beaten, are not being starved, are not being you know, touched inappropriately, spoken to in, in unconscionable ways. I like the freedom that my characters have. Ah, what would it look like to get a knapsack and leave and feel the way I do when I'm on my way to school? When I'm in that, when I'm in that frontier between the abusive home and the deliciousness of school. There's a freedom. So I decided to step into that place of freedom. In that, as I said, that liminal space between what I knew and what I didn't know. Yeah. And I unknowingly cast myself onto a journey of the unknown, like a ancient initiate. Mm -hmm. And I have been on that journey. And this book, Permission Granted, is the culmination of that journey. What mm -hmm. it is to be untethered, what it is to jump empty handed into the void and to trust that which already is, always has been, and always will be. Thank you so much for all of this and your time and your explanation and your energy. I can feel it. It's here. It's present, your presence. So I'm going to end on my last question. If you could leave the listeners with some words of wisdom today. And you've given so much already, but in a minute, what would they be? I would say to each person listening to this beautiful exchange to aspire to live their lives as a blessing in the making every day to show up in the world as someone that brings well-being to others, to think of oneself as a beneficial entity and to make gratitude one's daily prayer. And then to be the embodiment of that gratitude as a blessing, not only to oneself, but most importantly, to other human beings. Mm. Thank you, Regina, for those words of wisdom and for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. Mm, you are welcome, Summer and anybody wants to get a hold of me i love instagram you know i'm a sucker for those followers right <laughs> oh my god so <laughs> come for me come for me i love it i won't be mad at you i am at the real regina louise because what else could i be the real <laughs> regina louise and subscribe to my website at www 
I am ReginaLouise.com. And I will keep you abreast of some of the brilliant offerings I'm going to release to support us through this holiday season. So, mm, Summer, thank, thank you. you for sharing your platform, sister girl. You got a friend in me. <laughs> thank Always. you. And as Regina said, you can connect with Regina Luis by following her on Instagram at the real Regina Luis. You can visit her at www.imreginaluis.com and you can reach out to her publisher new world library to schedule an interview and you can find her book permission granted on amazon and other retailers thank you for joining us on the core women podcast with dr summer watson we're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you find us on instagram facebook and youtube at core women and on twitter at core women one For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love & Money Collective, a Core Women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.